Hey guys, welcome back to my workshop. Today I'm going to start a new video series called Code With Me. In this video series I'm going to be taking some coding challenges and I'm going to be recording solving those coding challenges using C++. I'm going to be using some of the newer C++ coding standards, C++11. Uh, hopefully you, there will be plenty to learn and uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments below if you have any questions about what I've done. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But Let's dive into our first challenge. Today's challenge that we're going to solve is called Beautiful Strings. Beautiful Strings. In this challenge, you are challenged to calculate what would be the maximum beauty score for a string. So, given a line of string, say, for example, we were given a something like that, a, b, b, c, 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 to figure out how beautiful the string can be, we have to assign a score to each character between 1 and 26. To solve this today, what we're going to do is we're going to count up each character in the string and figure out how many times that character occurs. So let's count up the number of A's, the number of B's, and the number of C's. So the number of A's is 1, number of B's is 2, number of C's is 3. Now we know to get the highest value for beauty if we can assign each character any score. So if we assign C, it's going to be 26 points. B is going to be 25. And A is going to be 24. Then to calculate the beauty for this string, we can say, well, we have three C's. So we do 3 times 26 times 25 times 24. Four. So that equals 24 plus 50 plus 78. And then we add these all together. Um, 15. Did I do that right? Uh, yeah, 152. So that would be the maximum score that we could give to this string. Um, so how, how can we do this in code? All right, so let's figure out how we actually do this in code that we count up the characters. So we're going to create, let's create a big old array here, okay? And the first item is going to be item 0, 1, 2, and all the way down to 25, all right? Because in C, C++, we index starting at 0, okay? Uh, so if we have our string, let's just write some string, and we are going to uh, count each character. So say we have what what number is S? Uh, it's somewhere down here, because um, these correspond to A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. So S here, we see that we have two. So We'll put a 2 here. And we have a bunch of other 1s right here. Da, 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 da. After we've counted all these characters, we have this array. Uh, some of the highest values are going to be somewhere in the middle. Like in this example, we have two S's, so 2 is our highest value. So we're going to want to assign that to 26. The easiest way to do this is if we take our array, the same array, and let's just sort it from low to high. So we'll get a bunch of zero to a bunch of ones, and then a two. Do we care what position these are in relative to the character? No, we don't need to know what character they are anymore. We just need to know that the highest occurrences had two, the next highest had one, etc., down to zero. So now we easily can say, well, our beautiful score, our highest possible beautiful score is going to be 
our point value, so this will be 26, 25, 24, times the number of occurrences, and then we just, you know, do a big sum, and we have our answer. All right, let's go ahead and actually write some code. Let's dive into some code. All right, so let's make a new folder. Um, beautiful strings. Let's make us a, a file. All right, so we're gonna start out here. Oops, we're going to include IO string because for these code eval challenges, uh, that you have to read in a, read in uh, a file and then output it to standard out uh, your output for the program. Um, so we we also need f string um, to read from a file. Okay. So let's just start. Oh, and I know that we're going to use uh, sort, and that's in our uh, standard algorithm li library. So let's include algorithm. Now I'm going to want to use this algorithm library in a lot of different cases because it's so useful uh, and I want to teach all the different possible ways that you can use it. So let's get our, oops, our main program stubbed out. Alright, just because we don't, oh, shoot, let's see. Gotta fix my tab link. So the first thing we're going to do is we know that we're going to be provided a file name as one of our arguments to our program. Um, so the first argument that we're provided is always the name of the, well, it's not always the name of the program, but in Linux usually it is, depending on what's calling it. Uh, then we're given uh, the rest of the parameters provided to the program. Uh, so we know that we are going to, to get two arguments. So let's just do a quick check. And let's see, return one, if we have the wrong number of arguments. All right, let's go ahead and close it. Uh, so now, yeah, return zero on success. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to wa want to do is we're going to want to uh, read in the file. Uh, so we're going to actually also use standard stream. And the easiest way I've found to do this, okay, well first let's open our file. So we're going to do a new input f string input. And we know now that rb0 or 1 is the name of the file. Okay. Alright, so next we're going to create a, oh you know what? Let's actually use. All right, so now we're going to create a a variable called line, and that's our buffer that we're going to read in the file inputs to. All right, and I'm going to use std get line. That takes in an input stream and a string. All right. I still need to fix my tab link, but we'll fix that later. All right. So now we have a line of text. The next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, count all the characters in that line of text. So I'm going to get a, a standard array. So the beauty of the array 
is that it's like a C array, but it actually stores the size of the text and everything like that, so you're less likely to shoot yourself in the foot. All right, so we're going to have an array of integers, and the next line is how many characters, or how many items in that array we're going to have. And we know that we have 26 letters, so let's go ahead and make it 26, okay? Um, counted Charles. So now we're going to want to iterate over our line of text and count all the characters in it. So we're going to do a range based for loop. This is a C11 feature. And I'm going to use an auto keyword. Oops. Alright. So now we have a loop that will iterate over every character in our line. Now we need to figure out if it is one an alphanumeric, and then add it to our counted character list. Um, so let's see what the, uh, what is it called? I know there's a two lower function. Let's just do a quick look. Because it's in the C standard, C, C, T, all right. So let's do that. We're going to do include, CC type. So this should give us our two lower function um, because we don't care if it's upper or lower case. And oh, look, here's our is alpha, and it's in our CC type header as well. All right. So if we just go like this, if is alpha our character then we're going to want to um, count it. So let's do, well, we'll do the index. All right, so what now we need to make it lowercase. That way, um, oh, you know what? I forgot something. All right, and we're going to subtract off the character A, OK? So this makes sure that first it's an alphanumeric character, uh, then we're going to convert it to lowercase, so that way the hex value will be somewhere between 60 and what, it, what, what is it, it's like 7 something. Um, and then we subtract off the, the ASCII character A, which is 60, so that will re-index it from 0 to 25, Z being 25. All right. So let me just do that. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We didn't initialize this. So I think, let's look at our standard array and find the constructors and see, let's see, constructor, 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 implicitly, implicitly, constructor. Let's try the interwebs and see if we can find a solution. A simple solution. I think you can just give it the curly braces. Yeah, okay. Alright, so if we just provide the curly braces, that in C11 refers to the default constructor. And this will actually go through and default construct all the variables, or all the, the, the yeah, all the values in that standard array uh, for its default construction. And since we have an int type, the default constructor for an int is to just set it to zero. So this will set all of our array to zero. You know, let's go ahead and do an intermediate step. And let's actually compile it. So according to the, the form, oops, these are the flags that are provided when uh, Cody Val compiles the code. So let's just go ahead and do that. All right, it compiles. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so let's um, let's create an input file and let's just go back to our uh, input. File. 
file here. Let's just copy that, put it in here. All right, so if we just run our program right now, it won't do much. But at least it executes and it returns, so we don't have any infinite loops. So let's go back and uh, do the rest. All right, so, oops. Oops. Okay. So after we've looped through and counted all the characters, now we need to sort them. So we're going to call standard sort. And we're going to sort from the uh, begin. Where is that begin? Uh, begin. Counted chars. End. Now, we actually, well, okay. Now this is fine. We can make it work like this. Alright. So let's just see, let's just try this, okay? Let's do some C out. Oops. Um, well, no. Okay. So auto value in our counted chars. Let's print them out here just so that we can see. Um, this, put it here, alright, so this will print it out before, let's just make sure, before, and let's do the same down here, Recompile our code. <laughs> no errors. I'm on a roll. All right. So now, all right, cool. So we can see here in our text, for all there's a lot. So in that first example, there's one A, two Bs, three Cs. And then after we sort it, we can see that the most common occurrence that we should give 26 points is C. So does this make sense? One A, two Bs, three Cs. That's wonderful. All right. So it looks like it's working. So now we can go ahead and actually oops, uh, calculate the values. So we can just get rid of these lines. Okay. So now we can just go like this. Uh, four auto values are same. Same for loop that we did to print them out. Um, uh, yeah, so we're going to go points. Actually, we're going to start this out at 1. And then we need, well, yeah, point value. Uh, let's see, uh, beautiful value. Alright, so what we have here, let's just uh, initialize this to zero. Okay. So what we have here now is we have a point counter. So we're going to start at index zero of our counted chars is going to be zero point, or one point. So all we have to do now is we have to take our counted chars and we have to multiply it by our point value and then take the sum of all those values. So that should be pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say, oh, whoops, I'm not editing. Okay. Beautiful value is plus equal to. So we said it's going to be our value. Uh, here, let's give this a more meaningful name. Num chars. 
So it's equal to our number of chars times our, let's call this point value. So now our point value, oops, we increase it. All right, and then we just have to see out. think the odds are that this is going to work. Alright, let's go ahead and execute it. Alright, 152, 754, 491, 729, 646. What do you know? It looks like it works. Cool, huh? Alright, so let's look at the code again. And just, oops, look at the code again. So you can see here, we have our point value starting at 1, counts up to 26. Our total value, and we just calculate it. And then we, at the end we print it out, and we loop around and we get the next line. The beautiful thing about SCD GitLine is that when it's done reading the file, it returns false, and you can exit out, and our program's done. Uh, so, here's the real uh, question. Let's go ahead and submit a solution and see if it uh, actually works. Uh, let's see, where did I put it? Uh, workspace, Cordova, beautiful streets, okay. And upload. Now something you need to know about Codival's sandbox that they use to compile and uh, run your executed, or run your application to test it against our values is that it's somewhat anemic. It's uh, very slow and not a very powerful machine. According to the, um, the support forums, uh, one of the Codeval employees said that they are in the process of migrating to more powerful sandboxes and that will be done in a couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully by the time you see this video, their, uh, co their sandboxes will be a little bit more powerful. Now the reason why I bring that up, oh, look at that, it worked. It took three seconds to execute, that's an eternity. Anyway, uh, or three milliseconds. Anyway, the reason why I bring that up is because if you use some of the more complicated headers in C++, uh, such as algorithm is one big one, uh, it will take too long to compile and they cut off the, uh, the compilation time after 10 seconds and fail uh, the submission after 10 seconds. Uh, so if you're using these complicated headers uh, in your C++ code, it's going to fail and you will... Sh it, here, let me go back to my scores and you can see uh, so like the blue shredded pieces. Uh, so like the blue shredded pieces. What you'll see is you'll see errors, and you'll see a compilation was aborted after 10 seconds. Um, but whatever. All right. All right. Hopefully you learned something and uh, you enjoyed this. So. If you did, uh, give me a thumbs up and show your support. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Uh, and of course, subscribe by clicking on this box right here and uh, join me for more coding sessions as we get delve into more complicated C++ features, libraries, and, and other stuff. See you next time.